Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome into your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, from here in the Muskogee Media Studios, and we are so excited to have you with us for this week's show. We've got a great show lined out. We hope that you've been following us throughout the week. We're getting our subscribers up. Uh, those numbers continue to grow on YouTube. Glad to see that. Uh, we have content all throughout the week on there uh, and on our social media sites, so continue to go to those, as well as muskogeemedia.com. Lots of news happening lots of things going on mm -hmm. including one of our first features this week uh, here in the last couple of weeks really we've been doing a, a few tutorial videos really um, uh, informational pieces on some of the things that happen around here at Muskogee Creek Nation and Indian country in general one of the things that always comes up per capita payments. You know, why do we have services instead of uh, just getting a check every month, as a lot of people think that a lot of Native Americans do? This video explains per capita payments and how it relates here at Muskogee Creek Nation. Muskogee Media presents, what are per capita payments? Much of the revenue utilized by the Muskogee Creek Nation government is from casino operations. Profits from the MCN casinos fund many programs and services provided to citizens, but it is also possible for the net profits from these operations to be distributed to MCN citizens directly. This is known as per capita distribution. How does per capita distribution work, and what are the requirements for a tribe to conduct such distributions? In 1988, the United States Congress passed the National Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, this act contains the regulations under which all Native American casinos operate and established the National Indian Gaming Commission. The United States Department of the Interior has issued regulations regarding per capita distributions of Native American casino profits. Per capita payments are defined by these regulations as, quote, the distribution of money or other thing of value to all members of the tribe or to identified groups of members which is paid directly from the net revenues of any tribal gaming activity. This definition does not apply to payments that have been set aside by the tribe for special purposes or programs, such as payments made for social welfare, medical assistance, education, housing, or other similar specifically identified needs." End quote. According to these regulations, Native American tribes are not required to make per capita distributions under the IGRA, and if they elect not to, the tribes can still use the profits to fund tribal government operations or programs, provide for the general welfare of the tribe and its members, promote economic development, and donate to charitable organizations or local government agencies. Department of the Interior regulations require that if a tribe does make per capita distributions, that tribe must submit a tribal revenue allocation plan to the Secretary of the Interior for approval. This allocation plan must include reserving adequate funding for tribal government, as well as tribal economic development, donations to charitable organizations and local government. In addition, the tribal revenue allocation plan must include information and criteria for accounting of disbursements as well as dispute resolution and utilization or creation of a tribal court system. Per capita distributions can be made to only an identified group of members instead of all members of a tribe, but this must be justified and not violate federal or tribal law. For more information regarding these regulations or per capita distribution, contact the United States Department of the Interior Office of Indian Gaming at 202-219-4066 or visit the National Indian Gaming Commission at www.nigc.gov.
All right, thanks again to Jared Moore for that video there. Did a great job on that as well as the uh, Blood Quantum video. You can find all those now on our social media sites, on our YouTube. Please go check those out as well as muskogeemedia.com. Uh, moving right along, our next feature today uh, brings quite a character on the show, a friend of the show, longtime state representative for Oklahoma, Jerry McPeak. He is also the tax commissioner here at Muskogee Creek Nation. We talked with him for a year in review on how the tax commission did and how it works with the state on compacts and things like that. So we hope you enjoy this. Well, I show up uh, to keep the young ladies that work in there happy and keep them going. They do a great job and uh, really enjoy watching them work. They do a good job with the citizens. And um, we view our job as being able to take in the money that the Creek Nation is able to operate with. And the neat thing about the money that comes through the tax commission is the council and the administration can utilize those funds in any manner they want to. There's only a small portion of those that are earmarked for certain things. So they have a lot more leeway than they do with that money than they do with the money that comes in from federal funding or from certain other agencies. Uh, for us, there's regular, just regular sales tax. Uh, of course, we have the tobacco tax. Uh, we also now have a liquor tax and a beer sales tax. And uh, we have a fuel tax. So the fuel tax compact was probably the first compact uh, that the tribe had. We have a fuel tax compact as well. So um, just the, we have the regular sales tax at our convenience stores that other, other places have and anything on tribal land is eligible for us to tax any sales that comes from those, those areas that are on tribal land. We have the right, maybe even the obligation, to charge tax. I will admit that there has uh, been a lot of argument with the state, and, and not so much, well, some with the feds too, but a lot of argument with the state about what is right to tax there and what's the right amount. And of course, some of those have changed from tribal land to uh, land that wasn't tribal land back into tribal ownership, and so we get into some situation with that as well. That's in our code books. We, we have a 6% sales tax um, and then as we go along we have those. Our tax like on our tags uh, is considerably less than the state tax. So it is a big advantage for our tribal citizens. I won't get into the complexity. We're talking about having the, the, the tags all over Oklahoma which has been perhaps one of the greatest controversies since I've been here. However, the truth is if we did that, and I'm one who likes, I'm proud of my Creek heritage, but if we did that and we did it with the same way that other tribes have, it cost us millions of dollars and it would cost our citizens in our Levin County area millions of dollars. Not thousands, but millions of dollars. So uh, the other compacts that the other tribes have, except for the Cherokees, is one that's pretty expensive for their people. It sounds nice. Politically, it sounds like a great thing to do, but in actuality, it's a very expensive thing that really uh, it's not good for the citizen. You know, con talking about the vehicle uh, taxes and, and the tags and the fees, we actually had last year the largest, best year financially ever in the history of the tribe. And this year is even higher when it comes to the tribal tags and the assessments that we did with those. And what's so cool is we haven't raised any of the rates. None of the rates, none of the percentage were ever raised. It just came from an increase in business. You know, no, it, it, we shouldn't fear it. Um, it's to be expected, as you know, the economy in Oklahoma is not as good. The economy around, around the United States is not as good. However, to make the folks around here feel better, I've also been in the state legislature, and our economy in Oklahoma is one of the strongest economies in the United States. Uh, when we start talking about how bad it is, and when the state legislature talks about how bad it is, I get really perturbed when I was there last year. No, we aren't that bad. We've just done a poor job of managing it as far as the state's concerned. Our tribe has done much better, done a much better job of managing it. So we have a slight decrease as far as the tax is concerned. It's statistically significant, but it certainly isn't anything to be alarmed about. It's more like a two and a half percent decrease. And since you're on that subject, uh, with the addition of what we have at Margaritaville and the hotel, we've established there a new source of income because uh, thanks to, uh, we have a Jennifer Langley who takes care of our tobacco things and works with some of our other taxes, there is there being assessed a resort fee with the hotel. And that resort fee will be equal to about 6%, which isn't it amazing? That happens to be exactly what our sales tax is. But we're not calling it a tax, we're calling it a fee. And I'll be extremely candid. Um, if the state wants to challenge that, that's the same thing that they're pulling off by saying they're not increasing taxes, they're just increasing fees. So we have a resort fee that they pay. That will bring in, us, that will bring in a, a lot of money for the tribe this next year. So I really anticipate that next year will be a big record setting year. We also get some tax income from the new restaurants there. So 
Uh, I expect next year is going to be even larger than what this year was, regardless uh, if the economy stays the same or even drops a little bit. We're probably going to increase in, as far as the tribe is concerned. We, there's no way we can know. We, we have to, you'd have to estimate the number of rooms and how, much, how full they were each time and how much each cost of it was. And I'm not. A, I would be extremely shocked if it isn't close to a million dollars increase, though. That's what's so much better about how we generate our own income. And that's part of sovereignty, by the way. Tribal sovereignty, part of tribal sovereignty is that we have the ability to tax ourselves. That's part of the, of the legal words, the legalization of making us sovereign. That was part of the description even. They said that we have the right to tax, to, to do taxes. So yeah, and the taxes we collect are so important. That they actually have a multiplying factor because we can use them in so many ways. We can use them so much more efficiently than you can the ones that have to be earmarked because of where they come from. They have to be used for this. You only buy these things. You only use it for these things. Uh, the finances we generate for ourselves are much more efficiently utilized and be utilized for so many more things in, in a better way than just the ones that come in from the federal government. As a matter of fact, uh, the fuel tax was several years ago, and the fuel tax is pretty complicated. They did it by the population of your tribe, and then they, they redo, the, redo the population every quarter, and it, it gets to be pretty complex. Or you can do it by the amount of fuel that you, that you sell. And you have, in fact, this year was an opportunity we had to change that, and it was our advantage, it was our advantage not to change that. Uh, because we were actually doing better than we would had we just done it. And I would have thought because our sales should have increased that we'd do better. And I was all about changing it. We're going to get it, mm, uh, put the pencil to it. It didn't work that way. We were better off to use the, use the old system. So yes, there are compacts. The state seemed like to me they would like to compact everything. And they've approached me about compacting sales tax. And I told them I'm not interested. Even some of the, I've had a community come uh, to contact me about compacting about sales tax. And I said, I'll tell you what. If your community will give all the money back to us that the tribal people have paid to the city as tax, we'll start their level, then we'll negotiate. So when you pay us the millions and millions of dollars that we've put into that community in sales tax that my tribal citizens have, now we'll start talking about compacting the rest of it. They're obviously not willing to do that. And that may be kind of an overstatement, but it truly, I, I sometimes think, so. we recognize that as Creek citizens, we're Oklahoma citizens and we're United States citizens, and we recognize that. I'm not sure sometimes that that is reciprocated exactly, recognize that we are part of why you're successful, because we're part of your citizenship. We have the best compact, and uh, I know even some of our smoke shops question that, but I can show you the numbers where each time uh, the rate goes up for the state, we are the lowest, there's a scale, and we're the lowest one, and maybe the Cherokees have an advantage here, but we're with them. And then the next year, well, maybe the Osage have an advantage, but we're with them. So we've always had the best compact there was once they got our second compact. Uh, with that, we started lower and it was graduating up. And this year we had to take a hit. We took a 15% increase. Even with that, yes, we do have an advantage over uh, the non-tribal stores as far as pricing is concerned. Because like right now, uh, we pay, f well, we're going to be paying 45% of the tax that a non-tribal store would pay. Along with that, though, we also charge a tribal tax, which gets it closer to 75%. So our stores pay 75%. They still have a 25% advantage about as far as the tax is concerned. And it's part of what you just heard me visiting with a member of the Choctaw Nation, a gentleman that works with it there. We really believe strongly, and you heard it first here on Indian News, um, that the governor's going to get a tobacco tax this year. I believe that the climate is right, she's going to get that. My concern, and I know we can trust the white man, and no offense to my daddy was a full blood white guy, I'm not prejudiced, but our concern is that they'll try to name it something besides a tax and make it an assessment or a fee or we're going to have you a participation number. If they do that, all the tribes in Oklahoma should be absolutely livid because they're simply breaking their word. Their word was, it's a certain percentage of the tax. They're going to raise the tax. I hope that they have the integrity not to try to beat the Indians out of the deal they made again. That would be so disappointing. I visited in the governor's office just yesterday explaining that very thing, that raising the tax or not raising the tax, I don't know that we feel any differently than anyone else does about it.
but we feel very strongly about the fact that you made a deal. Keep your word. Keep your word. This would upset us quite a bit that you didn't keep your word and base it on a percentage and it is a tax. That would be very upsetting. Well, that was part of the compact. We knew that when we started. Uh, when we negotiated it, we started lower. Um, that was just what was negotiated. And that was part of the deal. We knew it was. It wasn't just us. It was all the tribes. Some of them took increases last year. We didn't. Some of them took increases two years ago. We didn't. We were able to stay on the same very, very low rate for the last two and a half years. So we had a distinct advantage, and that was one thing I was able to, uh, we garnered, we figured during that period of time, we probably garnered an extra $6 million just for our 11 county area that either we kept as a tribe or our citizens got to keep because we had so much lower tax rate than everyone else had. Uh, our tobacco tax goes, uh, I think it's 2021 maybe, our, our, our compact goes longer than anyone else in the state because we actually completed ours after everyone else in the state once we got to renegotiate it. Uh, the gaming compact uh, comes up in 2000, I think, I think it's really actually done in, at the end of 2018 perhaps, so it's two years away, but there's some, still some talk about doing that redoing those. That money just goes straight to the state. The, we, we receive, uh, the tribe gleans money from the gambling, from the casinos, just straight from the profit of the casinos. Uh, the money that's given to the state doesn't go through our coffers and not considered part of our money or any of that kind of thing, it just goes straight to them. I wish I'd brought that. Um, I don't have this year. They just had a meeting yesterday that talked about how many billion dollars we've given to the state. It is, it's extraordinarily significant. It's in the may, hundreds of millions of dollars that we give each year. Uh, that we thought probably was going to go to education when truly in the, in the agreement it doesn't say it has to go to education. It doesn't, say it, ha it doesn't say how much has to go to education. So even though we thought it was going to education, even though I think all of Oklahoma thought it was going to education, uh, truly the deal was it doesn't necessarily have to go to education. And uh, that's that's disappointing. Now, on the other hand, the gambling bill we voted on, the state voted on, that money was supposed to be earmarked for education. Um, and every year when I was in the state legislature, I'd ask them, where's the money? Because that was supposed to be on top of the budgeted money for education. That was supposed to be, that was part of the, that was part of what we voted on. It said, this would be an addition too. Well, what they do is they say, well, we're going to have that in addition too, so we can. We don't have to give them quite so much. So they lower it down, let that in addition too actually fill in what they should have done. Uh, you want the humorous thoughts or the real thoughts? Uh, last year at one of our meetings, I suggested to one of the chiefs that he uh, tell the speaker pro tem that hey, we can loan you the money to get through the year if you want to. Uh, the Native American people, the tribes, have done such a good job business-wise that we have actually run the business better as tribal people than our state has as state people. I'm much prouder of being involved with the Creek Nation and the way we've done our business than I'm having been involved with the state and the way we run our business there. It's unfortunate that we've been so inefficient. It's unfortunate that we've been willing to let the wealthier people off the hook and we continue to have fees and assessments like we're gonna increase tobacco tax. Well, just a cold hard fact. Uh, that's going to tax the lower income folks. One of the, um, the tax cuts that they had last year and the year before that and the year before that. Those tax cuts favored the wealthy and pushed the tax burden to the less wealthy. Um, when you increase fees, what you're doing is you're, you're, you increase, like for instance this year, talk about some crazy things. This year the state legislature passed a law that required every car in Oklahoma, every vehicle in Oklahoma, to get a new tag. Even though you just bought a tag in 2015, you've got to get a new tag. And we're going to assess you for this new tag. Now, do you really think, and what they tried to sell you on was that those tags just went out, we can't read the numbers. It was just another way, it was another money grab. Did it cost the wealthy people? They can afford to buy it. The folks who didn't make as much money on minimum wage, that's a big deal. They've got to put some more money in just to buy a tag that they really didn't need. The tag was on their car, you could see just fine. But it wasn't optional, it wasn't for certain years' car, it wasn't for, it was just, everyone has to get one. That's a money grab. 
And those kind of things are, are very unfortunate. So uh, at the state level, we need to manage better. I would say the state could do better to manage their money, period. The state's trying to fix their budget problems by reducing spending. Uh, there's two sides of this. You've got a barrel. There's some coming out the bottom, but it's what's going in the top. And we're not putting as much in the top. We reduced, we reduced severance tax on oil and gas from 7% down to 1%. And then we, oh my gosh, we increased the tax all the way up to 2%. No, we didn't. We took it back up to 2% or 3% or wherever it is now, when it was really supposed to have been 7%. Now, I don't think that oil and gas should be taxed very much now because they're in a lot of trouble. I understand that. But when it was $130 a barrel, they're going to punch a hole in the ground wherever oil is. And so put a sliding fee on it. And, and there was like, so we need to look at our revenue stream, not just our spending, but our revenue stream. And, and as tribal people, we've done a better job of that. We've done better economic development. And you take right here in our area, around the Tulsa area, we've got the Osage and the Creek and the Cherokee people. If we pull out, if the Indians pull out of social things that we're doing, if we pull out of health care, we pull out of all the things we're doing to help people, Oklahoma is going to be like having to pull a huge plug out of the bottom of the swimming pool. It's going to go down so fast because all those tribes pay so much in health care and taking care of their elderly. And we do so much better job, by the way. I, I, our elderly, someone said, well, I don't think that Indians take very care of their elderly. I'm telling you, in the Creek Nation, if an elder person calls up, you better take care of them because if you don't, the chief and the council and the second chief are going to be upset. And you can get called on the carpet really quick for that. We take care of our elderly. We just have to know about it. If they call, someone responds. We are always very alert to those kind of things. That's why we call it a resort fee, as I said to start out with. We always try to be alert to those kind of things. Um, Sovereignty protects us from a lot of that. Sovereignty protects us from the government, either federal or the state, to overreach too far into what they can do and reaching into uh, tribal business. I'm not vastly over-concerned. I do think, uh, as in the metamorphosis of the change of anything else, I do think this is changing slowly. I think in a long period of time, it will evolve into something quite a bit different than what we have right now. But is it going to happen quickly? No, I don't think there's going to come up with think it's over because it'll never fly in the courts. Well, I think it's important for the citizens to recognize that, not to listen to the gloom and doom and, and how bad it is, because we're really doing well. And even though there's been some negativity about some things that happened with the health care within the Creek Nation, again, we're doing really well, and we're going to do better. I really am excited about where we are and the things we do and the things we do for our people. And this doesn't have to do with taxes, but just this weekend, as an example, at Okim, Oklahoma, they're having the, the, the agriculture youth portion of, of our tribe is hosting a livestock show for youth at Okima. It will be one of the two largest all-Indian youth livestock shows in the entire United States, in the entire world. So, what are we doing? We're doing pretty good. I'm proud to be Creek. We're proud to be Indian. Uh, I like the way my people do things. All right, thanks to Jerry McPeak for stopping in with us and uh, the Muscogee Creek Nation Tax Commission end of the year review. And I uh, want to thank him once again for that. Well, uh, moving right along, our next feature is a taco challenge. Where else can you see an Indian taco challenge but here on Native News Today? This is quite exclusive. What happened was, had a local business that has a Indian taco day, and we took a Muscogee Creek woman that just makes regular old Indian tacos and put them up against each other, put them to the test. What do you like about Indian tacos? I like the fry bread. I like the beans. Fry bread. And everything else, pretty much. Yeah. The fluffiness. I like mine fluffy and just golden brown, not too burnt <laughs> or flat. Yeah. yeah. And how would you describe an authentic uh, Indian taco? Uh, I'd say a lot of it would have to do, like you just said, the fiber, the texture, yeah. the texture of the, the way it comes together. So 
the taste is, you know, it has its own taste. So it's, it's a lot of the texture for me. The fry bread. The fry bread, yeah. That bread's pretty easy to cut. What do you guys think of your first bite? It's good. Tasty. <laughs> It's too flat to taste the bread. I kind of get a greasy yeah, taste. Yeah, a greasy taste. The meat tastes good. The beans are a good mix. Um, just the right amount of lettuce, really. But uh, again, the fry bread is made the main thing toward, for me on this one. And what do you think about this one? Uh, I gotta go with. This is probably the authentic one. B has. Good flavor. Again, the, the beans are a little more beany taste. <laughs> That's all, I mean, it's got a good mix, a good, a good fulfilling flavor, as opposed to a. When you get a good mix of meat and sour lettuce cream. and sour cream. It tastes good, but uh, for myself. Fry bread is the, the, the key factor in Indian taco. What he said. <laughs> that fry bread is a lot better. Yeah. Which one would you eat again? Definitely be. B. 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 And that will wrap up another episode of Native News Today. We want to thank everybody for making it happen this week. Our uh, participants in the Taco Challenge want to thank them, as well as our uh, taco maker uh, that was here in house. I want to thank all of those people involved in that. Also, Jerry McPeak for stopping in with us, and Jared with his video at the beginning. Uh, Jared Moore's video at the beginning regarding the per capita payments. Uh, everybody pulling together to make it a great show this week. So I want to thank everyone. I want to remind you out there, follow us on MuskogeeMedia.com. We've got a lot of great news content up right now and our social media sites. We've got a Valentine's Day giveaway, so find Muskogee Media on Facebook. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you next time.